Getting the approval letter is not the end of the process. Hey guys, Danny here and welcome to my little corner of the internet. Getting approved for a grant is very exciting, but it is also very important to look past the part where it says approved because you might be missing some very important information that can stop you from receiving your money. In this video, I'm going to go over my acceptance letter from the Canada Council of the Arts, as well as some of the steps that I needed to take to actually receive the money, what I did after receiving the money, and what I need to do to actually complete the grant. Here is the letter that I got. Dear Danny Alexandria, the Canada Council for the Arts is pleased to inform you that your application to the professional development for artists component of the Explore and Create program was successful. To learn more about how the Canada Council makes its funding decisions, please consult our website. Grant amount. The assessment committee that evaluated your application recommended it for financial support. You have been awarded a grant of $7,379. This is the first place that I stopped because I had actually applied for the full amount available for the grant, which was $10,000. This means that by only getting $7,000, certain aspects of my grant were not approved. If you get something like this, it is very important to understand which aspects of the grant were not approved because you do not want to go and spend the grant money on the non-approved aspects of the grant. You will run into issues there. For now, let's keep going. The first step in receiving your grant amount is to complete and submit the grant acceptance form. You must formally acknowledge that you accept your grant in the portal by May 22nd, 2020. Otherwise, the grant will be canceled. Right here is also very important. If you had just skimmed the letter that you received and were just jumping up and down after you got approved, then you could actually miss this very important information that there's a separate form that you need to fill out in order to actually receive your money. If you wait too long to actually realize that this is happening, one, you'll be very confused on why you haven't received your money and it's probably been months, as well as the fact that you would have actually forfeited your entire grant that you just spent so long and so hard working for to write this application just because you missed this very important step. Pro tip number one, the faster that you fill out any supplemental application or paperwork in order to receive your grant, the faster you will actually receive that money. So it is best to do it as soon as possible, the day of or the next, and just send it off. Especially if there's any issues, going back and forth with them is going to take time. And you do not want your grant to take extra time to get your money. You also don't want to leave it until the deadline because for example, for me, I got my acceptance in January 2020. The deadline is May 2020. That is a long period of time. If I had waited until May 2020 to fill out the supplemental application, I wouldn't be getting the money until much, much later, whereas I actually got the money in February. So why put it off when you can get it earlier? Especially because a lot of the times with grants, you have a set grant period. So mine was from last year, August, until this year, August. So if you put off filling out that supplemental information until May, well, now you have May, June, July, August to finish everything that you're supposed to do in the grant with the actual money versus having several more months because you filled it out earlier. Grant conditions. If you accept the grant, you agree to meet the following conditions. Please submit a revised budget via email, excluding non-professional development activities. The purchase of equipment and computer software is not an eligible expense. Here's where I wish Canada Council was a little more clear. I applied for a professional development grant and part of that professional development was to film my process and journey through that professional development and to share it with others so that they can learn and get better insight in the future, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. Obviously to film all of this stuff takes equipment that I don't own currently and that I didn't have any plans on actually purchasing because I only needed it for a short amount of time. You are allowed to rent equipment for your grant, you're just not allowed to purchase it. But in my grant, I had no plans on purchasing equipment. I was going to rent everything that I needed 
for the short period of time that I needed it for. All the equipment that I listed in my grant proposal was meant to be a rental, which I was told by Canada Council was perfectly fine. So the statement that they have in this letter for me is very vague because I had no intention on purchasing any equipment. I really wish that Canada Council would just put an itemized list of what they did not approve just for clarity's sake so that there is no confusion. So I am not entirely clear what wasn't approved in my grant, but I made the personal choice when revising the budget to just take off anything that was equipment because I didn't want to go back and forth with them and have certain things off and still not be approved and just become a mess. But it would be so much more helpful for them to just make everything more clear. I don't entirely know what they mean by the purchase of equipment. I don't know if they misinterpreted what I wrote and just looked at the budget and thought it was a purchase and not a rental. I am not entirely sure what happened and there isn't really a way to ask them what they meant by it. So I just wish that this part of the process was a little bit more clear and helpful for everyone to understand and for others in the future to know what to put in their budgets. Final report and major changes. You must submit a final report on your project by mail or email by November 30th, 2020 at the latest. You are required to provide a project update report for approval if there have been major changes to your activities. Refer to the general terms and conditions indicated below. Please contact me for more information if this applies to you. Make sure you do your final report. If you don't do it, you will actually have to pay back the grant because in their eyes, the grant would have not been completed. So I highly suggest putting this date in your calendar and setting a reminder like a month before and a week before to just make sure that it gets done and it gets submitted on time. Pro tip number two, look at any final reporting at the beginning of your grant and not at the end. It is so much easier to write your final report if you know what they're looking for. That way you can keep an eye on those things and take mental notes and gather information throughout your grant and just try and scramble and figure everything out at the end when you actually have to submit the report. Depending on the grant, it could be a receipt or anything else. For Canada Council, you don't have to submit actual receipts, but you do have to make a final budget. It is way easier to make your final budget if you are already organized at the beginning and not I don't know, scouring Amazon for things or pestering people for receipts to know how much you spent on stuff after the fact, instead of just doing it at the beginning and being organized. That way you can keep a running tally, make sure you're staying on budget, as well as have a majority of your final report already done. As for major changes, COVID-19 obviously has major impacts on my grant, as well as pretty much everyone else's grants in the country and around the world. Canada Council is making some exceptions because of the situation and the fact that it affects everyone. I'm gonna make a separate video about how COVID-19 has affected my grant, the changes that have to be made to my grant, as well as what Canada Council is going to be doing in terms of accommodating people for their changes in terms of COVID-19. Pro tip number three. Make sure that all of your payment information is up to date once you receive this approval letter. I applied for my grant in August of 2019 and I didn't get approved until January 2020. That is a very large gap. It is very possible in that large amount of time that your bank account could have changed, your card could have expired, you could have moved banks, or you could have just moved altogether. You don't want them sending your money in a place that you can't access it because it's just going to cause you a whole bunch of headaches that is completely unnecessary. So just make sure that your payment information is up to date and your mailing information is up to date once you get that approval letter. The last thing you want to do when you actually receive the money for your grant is to redo your budget for yourself. Like I mentioned earlier, I took off all of the equipment that I need to do my grant project to send back to them. But the reality is that I still need to be able to use this equipment to film my project. I'm going to have to figure out how to still acquire this equipment in a way that works for me. I had to relook at the entire project and all of the equipment and figure out if there were certain things that I didn't actually need or could do without. And the things that I did need, I had to figure out how I was going to pay for them. So I highly suggest making an extra budget it doesn't have to be super formal 
formal, doesn't have to be in Excel or whatever, but sit down, relook at everything and plan it out to make sure that you can afford to still do your project. If you can't make it work, you're gonna have to contact your granting body and figure something out. So just for your own peace of mind, for your own safety, so you don't get in trouble in any way with your grant because you start spending money on things that weren't supposed to be for the grant, or you run out of money because there are certain things that weren't approved, but you didn't really think about it until it became an issue, just do your own plan, your own budget to make sure that everything is accounted for. That's everything that you should be doing and paying attention to when you get a grant acceptance letter. If you have any specific questions about grants, feel free to reach out to me on my Instagram, my Twitter, or by leaving a comment down below. If you like this video or found it useful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I make videos about the music industry, my musician journey, my personal life, as well as my disability journey. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.